Okay, so this is part three now of the astro navigation uh, tutorial for beginners. And this time what I have is again an open SCAD. I have a cutaway section of the earth. So this is the earth and uh, you can see I just kind of hollowed it out. Okay, and like before there's a star way over here at infinity somewhere somewhere over here and the rays of light from that star appear to hit the earth as parallel lines okay and I'm not showing you know the, there's other lines coming like this also from the star but there's no point in talking about those because they don't affect the earth at all right okay so This is the cutaway section of the earth okay now I want you to notice this particular point here so this point right on the earth's surface is where the ray of light that's coming from that star is at 90 degrees measured from this local horizon so there's an observer here standing here right and he has a local horizon all the way around him like this it's again this is difficult to show on a 3d uh, on a 2d surface like a computer screen but I hope you get the idea but this is his local horizon and as he looks up if you were to measure the angle of the star with respect to his local horizon this angle would be 90 degrees okay that's that's what we talked about in the previous video also and if I rotate the earth you can see that indeed that is the case because so here's the ray of light that's coming down from the star. Okay, touches the Earth's surface, and this is that point, right? So you're seeing it from the inside now, and that star, that ray of light goes all the way through to the center of the Earth. So this point, if you remember in the last video, we call that the GP of the star, the geographical position not of the person that's standing there this is the geographical position of the star that's what we call this point the po point on the earth's surface okay where the star appears to be directly overhead or in other words a ray of light coming through that star from that star goes through the earth's surface right and then if it touches the center of the earth that position on the Earth's surface is called the GP, the geographical position of the star, of the star. Okay, and I've drawn some other positions here also on the Earth's surface. So obviously, everybody is getting illuminated by the star, right? But you can see very clearly. Now, if I draw the local horizon, then I from here. In this point of view this observer will see this angle as 90 degrees whether he looks at it from this side or he looks at it from this side or he looks at it from this side wherever he looks at it it's going to be 90 degrees because this is the GP of the star right and the star is directly overhead him. but an observer over here who's got this local horizon right he's not going to see the star at 90 degrees this is his local vertical so he's going to see it like this offset from the local vertical by some degree and look this guy is even further off so look at this guy this is how much he's going to be off okay same with this person here somebody standing here this is their local vertical you can see that because they're standing on the earth's surface this is the horizon for them and they observe this angle like this so the further away you are from that GP the more this angle is going to be the greater this angle is going to be the angle that you're measuring from the vertical you could measure it from the horizon if you wanted to but it's I think it's easier to just see that to measure it from the vertical is it's easier to see it fits our geometry better in actuality you probably if you've if you ever used a sextant you have a local horizon and what you actually measure with the sextant is this angle right and you call it the altitude of the star the local altitude but uh, if you remember the geometry that we talked about and the center of the earth and things that talked about we we did that from the vertical so I just stick with you it doesn't matter whether you which 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 angle you use it's all the same uh, 
when you think about it and think about the geometry so I like to think about it from the vertical rather than the uh, the horizontal uh, angle of course at some point when you're talking about sextants and things like that you have to start using this angle to think about um, uh, the 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 put the altitude of the star all right so that's what it looks like from the inside and again if you look at it from the inside and you had two observers one observer here was measuring this observing the star right overhead okay and you had the second observer somewhere here right measuring the star not quite overhead the angle between these two can be correlated with the arc length of this this angle that's measured between these two points on the surface of the earth the angle that it subtends at the center of the earth right this angle you can measure you can correlate this angle with this distance this distance let me show you that again with another point okay so this is the GP right this is another point on the earth's surface which is observing some other angle so I think it's probably this so this is observing some angle here right and we know that that angle that it's observing is also equal to this angle between the two points and you can correlate between this angle and this arc length or the distance between the two points now so that's the basic of angles and distances now let's move on to a little bit more complex um, representation where we'll talk about a whole lot of different uh, you know we'll talk about the entire earth's surface rather than just uh, one plane so here we're just talking about one plane of light coming like you know I'm just I'm only showing you one plane although in fact the light is probably hitting here and hitting here and hitting here and hitting here all of which are being observed at different angles by these observers right so we look at this image in a, in a moment but uh, for this for for this video you should understand that when I talk about this particular plane here the same concepts are also applicable to every point on the surface of the earth and I'll show you that in a minute okay cut away earth again all right only this time again the star is over here at infinity and you see now all these parallel rays coming uh, and hitting the earth at various angles depending on where you are on the earth all right now obviously one of these positions is the geographical position right that's this one okay and you'll notice that because the earth is a perfect sphere we have approximated the earth to a perfect sphere right so this is the geographical position okay some distance away is another position which is observing some angle and that looks that looks but like this angle there's another position which is also equidistant and you can see that's this one right and if these two distances are the same then this angle is got to be equal to this angle similarly if there's another point here right and these points are all equidistant from the this is the geographical position GP if these points are equidistant from the GP so there's a circle of equal distance then the angle that all these points observe of that star will be the same why is that well let's look at the earth from the inside now okay here's the earth from the inside and I'll just show you for four geographical positions so sorry not four geographic four positions on the earth yes, there we are. zoom in a bit more you can see a little bit clearer okay now this is the GP right where the altitude of that star is 90 degrees directly overhead is the center of the earth okay 
now if this is some distance okay x and we showed you earlier how the observed altitude from this position this new position is the same as this angle here measured at the center of the earth well if I moved x miles in this direction right instead of going this way I just went this way everything else is the same right the GP is the same the angle that the light is coming in is the same the distance between this point and the earth's center and this point and the earth's center is the same there's no difference at all so this angle A should be equal to this angle B let's take another point here now this is little bit again this is difficult to see be picture because it's in it's in 2d I'm drawing but it's actually a 3d um, earth if this ang this distance was X right this point would see that some light coming in at some angle okay and if this is X well then that angle is also equal to a and B so a is is equal to B is equal to C so irrespective of where you are on this circle on the earth's surface right let me draw that again irrespective of where you are on this earth's surface if you are on this circle right which is x miles away from the center the geographical position of that star all these observers are going to observe that light coming in at the same angle from their local verticals so let me show you that you can actually see that if I if I turn this around okay so this is the GP this point okay the star is directly overhead so this is 90 degrees okay this point is some distance x away this point let me bring that a little closer okay here's the GP this is 90 degrees all right this point is some distance x away okay and so that's this 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 person is measuring this angle as the altitude okay you see this but if these points are equidistant so this is equidistant from the GP and it's a little difficult to see that I'm drawing a kind of a, a circle on on the surface of the earth like this all these points will measure the same angle I'm going to show that to you by So it looks like it, it it almost looks as if this point is also got a 90 degree angle but if I turn that around you see that see the angle there see this one this is the GP so this is actually 90 but this angle this one is same the distance x away and now this angle is no longer 90 these four points are equidistant from the GP so this distance this distance this distance and this distance are all equal okay so if I were to just draw a kind of a locus of points equidistant from the GP of the star okay the observed altitude of that star from all these points would be the same right and so what does that tell me well that tells me if there's some way in which okay by looking up a book like the nautical almanac or by a computer program if I know that at some time say 1800 hours exactly 
okay now go think as i'm showing you this just think back to eratosthenes all right at 1800 hours exactly some star over here maybe aldebaran maybe um, you know uh, Sirius, I'm not sure, any, any any star over here, if it is directly above this point, right, and there's an observer located x miles away, now think back to Eratosthenes, right, located x miles away, doesn't matter in which direction, all these observers at exactly 1800 hours, when the star is above this GP, right, at, exact, at that exact time, all these observers will observe some angle of the star. All of them will observe some angle from their local horizons. Okay? And they'll all be the same. And not just are, will they all be the same, because all the angles are the same, now we work backwards and say, well, this observer found the angle to be something, this observer found the angle to be something, this observer found the angle to be something, right? Notice this is the reference line, this line, right? But all these angles are the same, right? A, A, A. So if all these angles are the same, these points have to be equidistant from the star, X, x x and how much is that distance that's simple right that's just the same 360 degrees right is the entire circumference of the earth and so if you have an angle a how many degrees how many miles is that x miles so again there's just proportional maths here if you know the circumference of the earth right and you know the angle that's being subtended here, you can calculate this distance. In other words, if at some point in time you know the GP of a star by looking up a table or a nautical almanac, somehow you found out this point, right? And you observe the star to be a certain number of degrees away from that point at that exact time you can say that you are somewhere on a circle of points. You could be on any of these points because this point also is going to observe the same angle. And so is this point and so is this point. So you could be anywhere on the circle of points. And so in navigation, this is what we call a position line. And that's based on your observed altitude of the star versus where the star is directly overhead all right now if that's understood we can move forward and if you haven't understood that part I suggest you go back and just watch this part of the video again and just know that these points if the angle measured from these points is equidistant from the GP or equal from the GP it means that all these points are equidistant from the GP from the geographical position and so you get the circle of possible positions if you observe the star to be at a certain angle from the vertical you're on a circle of possible positions around that GP okay now all right well there's not just one star in the in the heavens right this there's, there's, there's millions of them okay so from this star supposing you arrived at a circle of possible positions like this let's say there was another star here which i am not showing the rays for that but let's just say this was the gp of another star and you observed well another set of possible positions and let's say there was a third star here and you observed another set of possible positions well the only possible place on the surface of the earth you could be in order to meet the conditions of all these three position circles is over here and so this is how you find your position and that's how astro navigation works it's as simple as that it's all got to do with 
the angles measured at the center of the earth forget about all your books and all your numbers and your arithmetic and the forms you need to fill up that's all just confusion you know it's just distraction from the simple fact that all you're trying to do is establish what this angle is once you know this angle you can get a position circle if you can get two position circles or if you can get three or if you could get four depending on the number of stars you observe your, your accuracy of that position just keeps getting better and better so that's what astronavigation is about but there is one slight twist and to show you that I'm gonna have to zoom in a little which is which is this which is you're probably asking oh, all right so there's a okay so you've understood this I've understood okay so there's a circle of positions here and there's a circle of positions here but I'm doing a little bit of cheating over here I'm actually drawing these circle positions okay from the inside of the earth can you see that I'm, I'm drawing them from the inside okay which you can't do because you don't you don't you don't carry a cut globe around with you when you go sailing you, you you have a piece of paper you have a chart on which you do things so it's not possible for you to this is just a kind of representation of what actually goes on and there's no way you can actually practically implement something like this because how would you even measure you know this radius you know, because this is a straight line the earth is curved so you couldn't practically draw these circles and figure out your own position okay so we will do something else which is this and let me zoom in for that okay now this is a trick okay which is let me go back to the old uh, picture which i used the old 3d model it is slightly better for the for what i'm going to show you now okay so again just now we're just looking at one plane of the earth okay so just to avoid the clutter all right now i'm going to zoom in right here so i hope you can see that okay now at sea we use a method called dead reckoning okay and what that is is you dead reckon means basically you estimate where you are on the earth's surface okay just by your best estimate of your course and speed so say you are doing a course like this on the surface of the earth okay and you knew you were moving at some speed well you could just calculate isn't it how how much time you, if, if if at nine o'clock in the morning you were over here and you were moving at some speed you could calculate well i'll be over here at 10 o'clock right that process is called dead reckoning okay now here's how it works so what you do is you look up your nautical almanac or your computer tables or whatever it is and you get the GP of the star all right by dead reckoning let's say you were supposed to be here so you took your observation at let's say 11 o'clock in the morning so this is now at 11 o'clock you estimated yourself to be here all right and you knew the GP of the of the Sun was over here suppose all right okay now see if I can move this down and give you even a better view so okay all right so this is your DR position your dead reckoning position all right this is the GP of the star and you got this from the nautical almanac so you figure out at 11 o'clock exactly I'm going to, I think I'm going to be here on the earth surface and I know this Sun is exactly overhead this point okay here you know this angle is 90 degrees this is 90 measured from this vertical this local horizon okay and since you know your DR position now we're going a little bit in a different way we're doing the same thing but in, in sort of backwards all right you know your dead reckoning position you've calculated that based on your course and speed and other factors you know the wind blowing or the current and you've said to yourself well this is where I should be all right if that's the case this is your dead reckoning this is the GP you can calculate this distance and there are ways to do that there's 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 a type of geometry called spheric this type of trigonometry called spherical trigonometry okay which instead of working with triangles like you would in normal trigonometry it works with spheres spherical trigonometry so 
you have your dr position right you have your gp so therefore you can calculate this distance x once you calculate this distance x right you know that x i'm going to zoom out right this is your distance x you know that x is some fraction of the earth's circumference right whatever fraction that works out to be it could be maybe i don't know maybe it's a third of the earth's circumference or a fourth of the earth it doesn't really matter how far you are away from the gp this is the gp this is your dr position right doesn't matter how far you away you are but you know the distance so if you know the distance you can reverse work the calculation that eratosthenes did and you can tell yourself well you calculated this gp by looking up a book you calculated the dr the dead reckoning position by you know estimating how far you went in which direction you went and how long you were going that direction so you can now calculate this distance x using spherical trigonometry and there's a formula for that and um, i might even actually uh, make a small presentation uh, you know a little video on how to use spherical trigonometry anyway if you know two positions on the surface of the earth you should be able to calculate the distance between them right that's elementary stuff for a navigator anyway so you know this distance now reverse work what eratosthenes did if you know this distance so oops sorry Okay. You know this distance, and this is a curved distance. It's not a flat distance. Keep that in mind because you're going over the surface of the Earth. So you know this distance, right, from your dr and your gp. Right? If you know this distance and you know that this is some fraction of the circumference of the Earth, you can calculate this angle. You can get this angle and it shouldn't be easy to it should be easy to understand how you can calculate this angle because again you can say it like this if the entire circumference of the earth is equal to 360 degrees right how much is x equal to so that's x into 360 divided by the circumference of the earth and that will give you this angle here right in other words knowing your dr position and knowing the geographical position of the star which is here you should be able to predict what its altitude is because remember this angle is the internal angle internal to the earth and that's just the same as this angle here this angle okay so from your dr and from your gp using the distance between them the distance over the sphere not the straight line distance all right you can calculate what this internal angle should be and if you know what this internal angle should be you can calculate what this angle should be all right so let me go back now to the zoomed in picture and let's look at it from the outside again okay there we are so is the gp you've moved some distance and you reach this dead reckoning position right you think you're here you may not actually be because the wind may not exactly have blown you you know uh, the way you think it was blowing you maybe your um, you know your engine uh, was turning a little faster than you thought it was maybe the guy who was doing the steering for you the quartermaster the helmsman maybe he wasn't steering as well as he should have so you you think you've ended up here but you haven't actually ended up here for various reasons all right but you do know that if you did end up here you would observe that star at this angle okay now because you didn't end up here let's say you ended up here by mistake okay now this is the this is a trick so here's your local horizon here right and this is a parallel line from the star so instead of observing this angle you observe some other angle a dash 
okay supposing you ended up here instead of your dead reckoning instead of ending up here you ended up here because of steering errors and things like that you might observe this angle okay so what you can say to yourself is I should be observing this angle but instead I observed something a little bit more because as you come this way closer and closer right the, the star will get higher and higher up so you think you 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 think to yourself you should be seeing the star at some altitude here if you were at this DR but in fact you don't you either see a little bit more or a little bit less if you were on this side of the DR you would see a little bit less the star would be at a different altitude slightly less okay so what I'm what I'm trying to tell you is if you can tell the error between what you observe and what you expect again think about this there's an error in the angle between what you observe and what you expect and if you can tell that error you can then calculate this arc am I right it's the same thing this is just some angle subtended at the earth so now you know that this angle this error in the angle is just a minus a dash whatever this angle is right so if it's let's say it's a it's a tenth of a degree right supposing this angle is a you 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 think it's at you think it should be okay let's do some let's let's use some real values so you estimate that from your dr position this star okay which is over here this gp of the star let's say you estimate it to be it should be say 65 degrees all right so now I'm going to measure from the horizon right I'm just changing it for you because every, most navigators use the horizon as a reference so you estimate that this angle should be 65 degrees but instead of 65 degrees you observe 66 degrees right that means you're closer to the star by one degree at the center of the earth you observe the star at 66 degrees that means you're one degree closer because as this altitude keeps getting higher and higher eventually it will reach 90 here so if your observed altitude so I'm going to call this the observed altitude right is higher than your predicted altitude you predict this from the DR okay so if you if you predict 65 and you get 66 it means you're closer to the GP of the star by one degree right and it, by one degree right and if you predict the other way if you go the other way so let me just move this down a little bit all right now right okay so here you are at your dr you predict this angle should be 65 degrees right but you observe 66 degrees that means you're one degree away from this DR in this direction if you observe 64 degrees it means you're one degree away from this DR in this direction if you observe 63 degrees it means you're two degrees away from this position from this DR position right so it's angles correlating to distances Typically, your error is not usually so much. I mean, you know, if you're a decent navigator, you won't get errors like this. You might get an error of, you know, maybe a tenth of a degree or a twentieth of a degree error, which means you're actually very close to your DR, okay? You're actually so close to the DR. Now, I'm going to zoom in and you notice that if you get really close to this DR, the earth starts to look flat. okay so if we now got really close to this DR okay this dead reckoning position this is the dead reckoning position again you notice the earth suddenly starts to look flat and so we don't mind it there's a little bit of an error you know a mile here and a mile there doesn't really make that much difference on the on the surface of the earth okay so again let me show you that so this is the local horizon okay you calculate this angle to be 65 degrees but in fact you end up with 64 degrees Oops. 
and you end up with the angle being so this is the ray of light from the star and you ended up with it being 64 degrees that means you are one degree so this distance is one degree arc length measured at the center of the earth And if you're a navigator, you know that one degree is approximately 60 miles on the surface of the Earth. Okay, you can calculate that if you want to, um, you know. But just for simplicity, I'm just going to assume that it's 60 miles exactly. So if one degree is 60 miles, and let's say you can you you observe 64.5 degrees, that means you are 30 miles away from this DR. So you then now you get it right, and so this distance is called the in, in, in navigator terms we call this the intercept so depending on whether your intercept is this in this direction from the DR or it's in this direction from the DR right that depends whether you whether you draw your intercept line on this side or on this side of the DR what that basically means is whether you observed a greater angle than you expected or you observed a lesser angle than you expected so based on that you would take the DR from the DR position and just mark out that line and then and now since the earth is flat you can transpose this to a piece of paper because we've zoomed in so much that the earth's no longer a sphere it's a flat surface so now you can plot this line on a piece of paper and you get what is called one position line right and how do you decide in which direction you're going to draw this line well that's what you call the intercept bearing Oops. That's what you would call the intercept bearing, right? So this is the DR position again, okay? And you know the GP. You use the distance between these two to estimate how much the angle, this angle should be. You use the distance between these two to estimate how much this angle should be, should be. You observed a different angle, so you think you're about this much away from the DR. But in which direction are you? Well, you're in the direction of the star, right? Or you're away from the direction of the star. If you got a, a lesser angle, you were away from the star. If you were, if you got a higher angle than you expected here, you would be closer to the star. And so that is how you draw that position line on this bearing, on the bearing of the star. So if you go back to a flat piece of paper, now you can plot this on a flat piece of paper because like I showed you, it's just an approximation of the world and you approximate the world to be flat at this scale and so that's why you can now plot in the direction so the GP is somewhere in this direction right you knew you should have got 65 degrees suppose you ended up actually getting 65 and a half degrees when you observe the star so that means you're half a degree closer and because at this scale, it's f these these spherical lines become just flat lines at this when you zoom in so much. So this flat line here works out to 30 miles or half a degree. Okay, and then you can say that you're somewhere. Actually, if you look at it, you're somewhere on a huge circle. That's 30 minutes away from this point. But for our purposes, you can just draw a flat line here, and that's called your position line. So that's your first position line using this GP. Now all you've got to do is find another star and another one and get position lines from here's one GP, maybe here's another one, maybe here's another one and you get one position line from this. You get another position line from this. So this is star 2 and this is position line 2 this is star 1 and this is position line 1 and this is star 3 and let's say you got another position line mm, from this star which worked out like this that means you're somewhere inside this triangle and this might look like a big triangle but when you think about it, if you're accurate enough to about a tenth of a degree or you know a twentieth of de a degree in your observations and your calculations, this really doesn't work out to so much. It's about five square miles, five to six square miles on the surface of the earth. Think about it. 
that's really nothing at all on the surface of this earth if you're in error with your position by about five or six square miles that's nothing at all so that's it that's astro navigation that's how it works that's how it works the basics of it right and all those calculations you do all the arithmetic all the looking up in the tables and things like that it's all basically to find out the geographical position and how much should be the angle from the uh, from the DR position right so when you look up the nautical almanac this is what you're looking up where exactly is the geographical position of that particular object and when you look up the site reduction tables and things like that you're calculating this distance and you're trying to estimate how far is this DR away from this GP okay obviously you don't really need to do this today in today's world well you need the nautical almanac for this you could do it with a computer but you do need the nautical almanac if you don't have um, you know the the astronomical ephemeris data with you in on 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 the computer uh, you'd need the nautical almanac to do this but this part to calculate this thing that's easy you can do that with a calculator these days scientific calculator there's formula available and this is nothing more than what they call the great circle distance so if you look at look up look up on google you'll probably find a formula for the great circle distance between two points and so that distance then corresponds to this angle which you should expect to see from this dr of this star you don't see it it means you're either closer to the gp or it means you're further away from the gp how much well that's the difference between what you expect and what you observe and you can then plot that on a piece of paper and find a position line and so one position line gives you a line of positions if you have three or more you get a fix and you do that by choosing three other stars that's it that's how astro navigation works so I hope you understood and were able to follow along with this lecture uh, if you want I suggest you go back and watch the videos again um, until you do understand and if you uh, you know uh, if you're still not able to to understand and you know something still concepts conceptually bugging you just leave a message uh, in the in the messages down below and uh, if I've uh, screwed up somewhere I will uh, make another video or perhaps a more uh, a video that's a little bit more explanatory about what you uh, are not able to understand but I think it's fairly straightforward um, astro navigation is a tool of uh, you know mankind conquering the universe uh, and uh, it shouldn't be a mystery or a series of black magic steps that mariners need to do uh, in order to find their position you should be able to understand the concept of what you're trying to do all right so thank you for watching do remember that uh, all these files including the 3d CAD file the the modeling files are all available uh, in the video description and uh, you can download them and play around with them if you want so I hope uh, you've now got a little bit more understanding of astro navigation at least you don't hate it as much as most people I know hate it um, thank you